Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. My name is Harmon. Today's video is all about an Alcatraz inmate by the name of Robert Stroud, who most of you, or most all of you probably know him as the Birdman of Alcatraz. I'm here in Metropolis, Illinois, and I'm here checking out Robert's grave, his final resting place. So I'm gonna walk around the cemetery Talk to you guys about his life, what led him to get to Alcatraz in the first place, what crimes he committed, etc. And then talk to you guys about his life at Alcatraz and what happened to him after that. Robert Stroud was born January 28th, 1890 and died November 21st, 1963 at the age of 73. So he was raised in Seattle, Washington, which is where I live. And he was raised by a very abusive father. Uh, he stopped attending school after reaching the third grade. So he obviously was not doing well in school. Maybe it was because his father was an alcoholic. Maybe there was other reasons, but either way, third grade was his highest level of education. At age 13, he ran away from home. When he turned 18, he made his way up to Alaska where he wanted to go work on a railroad construction gang as it promised decent money and was able to get him out of the situation he was in living here in Seattle. Um, he quickly began a relationship with a prostitute named Kitty O'Brien in early 1909, Robert's girlfriend, again the prostitute, she was beaten by one of her former boyfriends. And so because of this, Robert decided to shoot her former boyfriend and it ended up killing him. Now other articles state that this former boyfriend was actually Kitty's pimp. He was sentenced to 12 years in prison and was shipped off to McNeil Island Prison, which again is pretty close to where I live, kind of on the Puget Sound area of Washington State. Pretty much as soon as Robert started serving his sentence at McNeil Island, he proved to be pretty difficult inmate. He got into fights constantly, argued with other inmates, assaulted a hospital staff member, and then the final straw was he stabbed another inmate. They transferred him to the Leavenworth prison in Kansas in 1912. And here at Leavenworth prison, this is where he started his bird collection. Ironically enough, I feel like Robert Stroud should be called Birdman of Leavenworth as he didn't actually have any birds with him in Alcatraz. He actually had them again when he was at the Leavenworth prison. So it's interesting that he kind of got that notoriety even though the birds weren't with him at Alcatraz. He displayed an interest in taking some new courses. And so he ended up taking like mechanical drawing, engineering, music, theology and math classes. And again, keep in mind guys, his highest level education before all this was third grade. However, all things seem to end as in 1916, his brother attempted to visit him. And when his brother was turned away, not really sure why, but his brother was turned away. And so he couldn't visit him. So he ended up stabbing a guard to death in the prison chow hall. For this particular murder, he was sentenced to death. However, Robert's mother and family members sent letters to then President Woodrow Wilson pleading with him to change Robert's death sentence to like a life in prison sentence. President Wilson agreed to that. And so Robert was sentenced to life in prison instead of a death penalty. In 1920, he found a fallen nest 
with some baby sparrows in it. He took the birds back to his cell and he ended up trying to read every single book he could come across dealing with birds. At one point he had over 300 birds living with him in his cell. He also built a makeshift laboratory of sorts to help kind of develop some medicines and things to help them when they were sick. After being able to smuggle a 60,000 word book that he had written, it actually became published. And his book titled Diseases of Canaries was published officially in 1933. He continued furthering his research and in 1943, his second book titled Stroud's Digest of the Diseases of Birds. Even though he had murdered a guard at Leavenworth Prison, they still let him stay there and let him do this pretty amazing work with the birds. Maybe they thought it would calm him down, keep him out of trouble. That's just a guess, but I think it, it proved to, to help him, kind of like a therapy of sorts. Just like we have like therapy dogs, right? I mean, maybe for him it was therapy birds. Uh, Robert was actually transferred to Alcatraz in late 1942 after it was discovered that Stroud had been secretly making alcohol in his cell. He began serving 17 years at Alcatraz on December 19th, 1942, and he quickly became inmate number 594. In 1943, a psychiatrist named Romney Ritchie diagnosed him as a psychopath and with an IQ of 112. Now, you guys might know the Battle of Alcatraz. That was a famous escape attempt by many inmates in 1946. Robert made efforts to actually protect other inmates. And again, at this point in 1946, Robert had just turned 56. So he was getting, you know, significantly older. He climbed down off the third tier railing then lowered himself onto the second tier and then lowered himself all the way to the ground level. Uh, he started trying to close the front steel doors of the six isolation cells and was yelling out to the warden. And of course there's like military presence because it was a big, big gun battle. He yelled out to them stating that there was no firearms in D block and that those involved in violence had retreated to another section of the prison. So, in other words, Robert did a lot to actually try to save many inmates from dying. Which, again, is kind of ironic because his uh, track record uh, up until then was murder, assaults, etc. But, again, he tried to turn himself around, tried to do better later into his life. In 1959, again after 17 years at Alcatraz, Robert was transferred to the Medical Center for Federal Prisoners in Springfield, Missouri. He ended up dying again on November 21st, 1963. He had been incarcerated for the last 54 years of his life, of which 42 years were spent entirely in the solitary confinement. All right, guys, man, what a crazy, crazy life Robert had. Obviously a very violent and terrible life in terms of him killing people and spending essentially most of his life in prison. But again, he made the most of his prison time after he stopped committing crimes in prison and killing people in prison. He kind of became a decent person and I mean decent. Uh, he still was an inmate, still was a prisoner, but um, I think the whole bird thing, it really did help calm him. And again, his books are pretty well written. They have uh, many different pieces of information regarding to like how to treat birds when they're sick. And so I think they're pretty interesting books, but 
Anyway, guys, I'm gonna head out of here. Again, if you're new around here and you enjoy these kind of videos where I go to the actual locations or visit the, the graves of these people, make sure you subscribe. And again, I'm gonna head out of here. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching.